times it was infuriating because he never did what he was supposed to do. He did what he wanted to do, which now, of course, is great because he had a small life, a short life, but it was a rich life. He just lived and breathed surfing. Uh, sometimes early in the morning, five, six o'clock, just at the crack of dawn, I would get up to take a walk on the beach and I would see this little fleck of something out in the water. And lo and behold, this little fleck would start waving and it's Alexander out there. I hadn't even noticed that he wasn't in his bed. I didn't go to check. Well, I'm Susa Lowenstein. Uh, we are in our studio in Montauk on East Lake Drive. And I always, as a sculptor, pretty much dealt with what was going on in my life. I would portray friends, I would portray families, I would portray my boys sitting at a table fighting, all life size and large. So when Alexander was uh, murdered on Pan Am Flight 103, this is what consumed me. Blindly, I started to work. And we got to know a lot of the uh, other Pan Am 103 families who lost loved ones on that flight. We had meetings, etc. And it was really pretty much then when it occurred to me what an incredible thing it would be if as many people as possible who had lost loved ones on Pan Am 103 allowed me to portray them. Many, many people came to be part of Dark Elegy. I had a platform in the studio and I would ask one woman at a time to come with me into the studio. Uh, we would sit and talk and uh, we would talk about her loved one and then finally I would guide her back to that very moment and it was absolutely astonishing and incredible what would happen. It was the sounds or the stillness, or the pulling of hair, the drumming of fists, the screaming, the weeping, the curling up. And that is the moment I would slowly and quietly go around her and photograph her. It's very basically a stick figure in steel, but it was heavily reinforced. Then I would wrap it many, many times with chicken wire, which is a wonderful material. It's very friendly. You can push it, you can pull it. It had the muscle tone, cheeks, rib cages, everything. That then would be injected with foam. The foam, of course, would come through the chicken wire and would have to be carved back to the contour of the chicken wire. Then I would start modeling with a fiberglass that is impregnated with a synthetic stone which had to be mixed in, in very proper proportions. The last couple of layers would be colored. I would try to put personality into the color. The more robust ones would have a darker color. The ones that are more fragile in their emotional makeup would have the lighter colors. And then the very last layer was is a fiberglass mesh which really has no purpose other than give a bandaged and held together by bandages effect. Pan Am 103 was really the first huge terrorist attack against the Americans. And then of course more followed, in particular 9-11. Many 9-11 people today come to sit with dark allergy and just reflect on their loss. Alexander's death uh, seriously impacted, of course, our younger son, Lucas, who incidentally also was a Syracuse University student and literally sat in finals in Syracuse when uh, Pan Am 103 went down. When Lucas came through the door, he was just crying beside himself, screaming, and the first words out of his mouth were, it should have been me. Here he was, our only child left, and the enormous burden that that carried for him. Uh, so there's one sculpture that I created where I portray Lucas down on his knees carrying a huge boulder 
depicting the burden with which he was left. Interestingly, two weeks prior to his coming home, I was so overcome with the sense of needing to go to London and see him immediately. I had an argument with my husband, of course, it was a huge expense for what? He was going to be home in two weeks. But I followed my instinct and I visited him and spent an incredible time with him in London. And after three wonderful days in London, I took him to Hamburg, my hometown, and introduced him to many of my family members, which he had actually never met. I remember uh, being in a little um, bed and breakfast with him and when I would tuck him in at night he would sort of have fallen asleep on his diary. And then we parted um, at the Hamburg airport. He went back to London and I went back home to New York and well a week later he was dead and I thought that was really an amazing amazing thing that I not only had this incredible sense of having to go and see him but that I actually did. It was a gift that I, of course, will never forget.